But today we got some new animals here at the Redland Conservation Center. We're gonna be heading to the world's largest reptile zoo right here in Florida. So there's some white throat monitors in here. So we just saw this side of the exhibits. He is the tamest rhino iguana here at Iguana Land. Oh, I see him. And now we're gonna take him out right now in three, two, what is up everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope all of you guys are having just an absolutely amazing day and for those of you that are new here, well I'm Jacob and welcome to my jungle. Now if you guys saw the title and thumbnail, you will know for today's video that today we got some new animals here at the Redland Conservation Center. Now we didn't get any cats, we didn't get monkeys, but we got some new critically endangered Recordi rock iguanas. Now some of you guys might not like reptiles, but reptiles just like the monkeys, just like the cats, the tigers, the lions, they need our help just as much. Their habitat's disappearing on a daily basis, and the scientists need funding. There's not a lot of people that care about these lizards. I mean, there's a lot of people, but not near as many people, so that's why I'm here today. This is my mission in life, is to teach you and educate you guys and get you inspired about conservation. Today, we're gonna be heading to the world's largest reptile zoo right here in Florida, about three hours away from me. We're gonna be heading to Iguana Land. We're gonna be touring the entire facility, seeing the over 200 130 different species that Iguana Land has. We're gonna be picking up our critically endangered iguanas. We're gonna be seeing the parents and we're gonna be looking at all the exhibits because this facility is top notch. It's incredible. So guys, let's turn around, let's hop in the car and let's get on the road to go pick up our new lizards. Three hours later. All right guys, we just made it over here to Iguana Land and we're with the founder and owner, Ty Park. Ty, thank you so much for having me here today. Oh my God, thank you for coming guys. I'm, it's been a long time, it's right? Been, it's been a long time since I've been here and I'm so glad to be here today to pick up the Recordi Iguanas. As you guys know, they're one of the rarest iguanas in the world. Yep, yep, yep. And to finally be able to work with one of these species, you guys know I have the rhinos, the Cubans, the Lewisai. So to finally we work with the really rare Cyclura, it's a dream come true. And Ty, thanks for making it happen. Oh, anytime, man. Of course. Anytime, anytime. So Ty, why don't you tell everyone what you're doing here at Iguana Land because this is the world's largest reptile zoo. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> well, basically I've been here since 2007, uh -huh. right? Doing uh, quiet conservation work and stuff. And I think we did make a difference as a private person. Yes. Uh, but I want to do more. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, in 2008, I decided to open it to the public. Yeah. Uh, and then I got hit by COVID. Uh, but, but you know, we're here now, it's all built. And yeah. what I want to do is, uh, you know, get to a point where we're breaking even so I have to put more money in it. Yeah. And that's important. Then after that, I wanted to do more expansion. And then, of course, ultimately, we want to yeah. do more conservation work. Conservation right? work, because that's, yeah. that's what we all care about at the end of the day. That's the number one thing is protecting these animals in yep. the wild yep. where they belong. Yep, absolutely. And uh, scientists need money. Yep. They need funding. And uh, as you know, Iguana Fest. This, this past yeah. weekend. $80,000 that, we raised. That's incredible. So Ty yeah. raised $80,000 for... What, what exact project was that going towards? Well, we're collecting all the, uh, the, the re funding requests. The funding I got three so far. Very cool. Uh, one app actually I'm really excited about is hormone study on cyclorus. Very cool. Because, you know, when um, uh, people have difficulty uh -huh. with um, uh, uh, like ovulating, uh, we have what we call a hormone treatment, yeah. right? So we want to. Uh, we want to do something similar with the cyclora. To the rock cyclora so when they're not breeding, you can get them to, yeah. get yep. them to breathe. Yep. That's amazing because yep. yeah. so many of these rock iguanas, pretty much all of them are critically endangered. Yep. Some of them, like we're going to see, like the penguin iguanas, there's only a couple hundred left in the wild, and you yep. have six out of right six yep. out of the, six out of 12 that are here in the united states so we're going to be doing a tour of iguana land we're also going to be checking out the baby record so guys uh -huh. if you want to see the crazy stuff at iguana land well follow along so we're heading into one of the rhino iguanas here at iguana land now you guys know i have rhino iguanas at home but we're here to see the famous donkey kong which is a giant massive <laughs> rhino iguana here oh my, yep he is definitely bigger than mine oh, he is our big boy dude this is this is one of the biggest rhinos I've ever seen. Now you guys know I have rhinos at home, but like I was saying, this guy weighs Gary. How much is he? Twenty six pounds. Yeah, twenty six. Twenty six pounds, definitely bigger than mine. You can see, just he loves his jowls being pet. He's got the big fat jowls, and he is the tamest rhino iguana here at Iguana Land. And guys, he does not disappoint. He's just amazing. 
All right, big shout out to my boy Gary from Iguanaland. Gary was a great tour guide and showed us literally every single animal at Iguanaland. And right now, what you're looking at is the Perenni monitor. The Perenni monitor is one of the coolest monitors in the world, and it's actually Australia's largest monitor species. Now, this guy was getting a little bit angry at us for bothering him while he was sleeping, so let's get out of here. So we're making our way to some of the cyclera and water monitor area, but look at all the amazing artwork that Ty's done. So we got all the different species. We've got some Lewisai, we've got monitor, We've got box turtles, but my personal favorite here, we got all of this crazy stuff, and there's all the enclosures here, so you can see it's all as professional as it gets, zoo quality enclosures, and then the cyclera area here that's in the works for the rhinos, I don't, I'm not sure what's going to be going here, but see so we got the big rhino iguana head here, which honestly looks so cool as you go in through the door, but these are not done yet. We have these exhibits where it's going to be as natural as possible for these iguanas, so it just is all this natural rock, but this is going to be a step these nice rock structures and it's on, kind of on an angle so the iguanas actually cannot climb out which is really well thought out there's also den boxes for when it's cold the iguanas will be able to go up under these caves and actually get the heat that they're going to need in the winter time because even though we live in south florida it still gets cold here i think here in punta gorda it's probably going to get i think it gets down into the 30s some of the nights but i believe there is like seven different exhibits here so we just looked at one of them here's another but again, all of this stuff costs a lot of money. To do exhibits as nice as this, it costs a lot. It's not cheap in the slightest, so Ty has done an amazing job so far. As you can see, look at these exhibits. It is so insane how well thought out and how well designed they are. So again, like I was saying, these are in the works. So these are pretty much completed, but these are still in the works. I'm definitely drawing inspiration for my own facility for my animals. I'm so thankful that Ty had me over here today so I can kind of check out all of his incredible animals and the incredible exhibits. So it looks like real rock, but really what it is is this is all custom formed with rebar. So they take the rebar and they form it and they put the wire mesh. Then they use the stucco and concrete to stick to the wire without the rebar and without the wire mesh this would all fall apart. So this right here, this is the bones to the enclosure. Without this, none of this would be possible. So to see this in development and in the works, well guys, it is just incredible. So again, we got all exhibits here. And you can see there's an incredible little carpet python in the back over there. And then when you zoom out, you can see the enclosures all have natural plants and natural sunlight, which is exactly what these animals need to be happy, healthy, and to thrive. So we just saw this side of the exhibits, but now let's look at the other side. I mean, these are honestly seriously well thought out. So all of these bottom structures in the blue, that's all concrete. And then the rest of these really nice aluminum frames, which are not going to rot in South Florida. The aluminum won't rot and rust. And then we have this, in Ty has these other exhibits. Look how long this goes. This is so amazing. So there's some white throat monitors in here. Now, since it was a winter morning and it was a little bit cool, all the monitors are in their den boxes. So it's gonna be kind of difficult to see all of them, but just to see the exhibits themselves is a privilege in and of itself. There's other monitors, but what I wanna show you guys is why we're here. We're here for the Record Eye Rock Iguanas, one of the rarest iguanas in the world. There's only two to 4,000 left in the wild, and the parents to my babies, they're right here. And there they are, the Record Eye Iguanas. These right here are why we're here today. Well, not them specifically, but their babies. But to see the adult, this is what I've been waiting for, to come look at them, see them. But they weren't that friendly, so that's why we didn't go in. But I would have loved to have gone in there, got my hands on them, to hold them, check them on out. So right now, I just made it to the Chelonian Center here at Iguana Land. So Ty has one of the largest collections of turtles and tortoises in the world. So to be here today and experience it in person, well, it's just amazing. So if you guys are in the Punta Gorda area, Area, and you want to come check out Iguana Land, see the world's largest reptile zoo? Well, guys, definitely check them out. I'm going to be linking them in the description. But let's stop talking and let's look at these exhibits because it's honestly incredible. So we have here we got Timor snake neck turtles. Now it's really hard right now to see the turtles because they're all hiding. But to see the ponds, all this crystal clear water, the natural nesting areas, the plants, it's just so cool to see all of this in person to give me inspiration for my own animals in my own ponds. We're sorely lacking a water feature at my house. Water features for the turtles, water feature for fish. So guys, we might have to get building. So we just went down our first row of enclosures and now we're moving on to the next row, which is honestly my favorite part so far of Iguana Land. So we just did this side and now we're moving on to this side, which there's enclosures on this side, which is all turtles. And then there is more turtles here. So this is all turtles here pretty much. There's definitely some tortoises, but right here we've got 
some North American wood turtles. It's really hard to capture these colors in person, but these ponds are just amazing. All the turtles have natural grass to climb on. They've got incredible foliage. So what I like most about these water features here is the ability for the turtles to thermoregulate. So there's a strip of shade cloth which goes the entire length of all the pens. So they can seek shade that way. They can bask in the sun. They can go in the shade under the plants and they can cool off in the water. So there's pretty much like there's probably three to five different temperature gradients in here, which is gonna allow the turtles to thermoregulate. Now, like I said, it's hard to see a lot of these. We've got some Mexican box turtles, which he has on loan from Animal World. I don't, never heard of them before. It's a beautiful day here in South Florida, and what a better way than to spend it at Iguana Land. So we're looking at pretty much all of the native snakes that they have here. So there is some non-native stuff. So there's ball pythons, even though we have some of these invasive here in South Florida. But these are kind of the snake area. But what I wanted to show you is the koi pond area. This is one of the nicest koi ponds that I've seen. There's not a cloud in the sky. So to be here today when it's a nice sunny and 75 out, well, I wouldn't ask for a better day. And when you move over here, it's filled with some incredible koi fish. I definitely myself want to do a setup like this, but to be here and seeing these koi, it's just amazing. So the next area that we got to check out and also my favorite was the indoor barn. The artwork on the walls was top notch and all of the indoor exhibits were so, so cool. They all were filled with live plants, beautiful rocks, so these animals could live as naturally as possible. Now it was really hard to see a lot of them because they were hiding, but that's okay because that's how you know they have good exhibits when they can get away and hide when they want to. So there was just endless rows of these exhibits with all different species from around the world. Now here we have a emerald tree monitor which is one of my favorites or the green tree monitor you see we're zooming in on him and he's just basking up on the log now what's really cool about iguana land is all of the guests that are here there was people that have probably never seen these animals ever so to get people in the door to see these amazing and incredible species that they otherwise would probably never see in their life well it's really cool that ty has opened this facility and giving everyone the opportunity to check out these animals like this black-headed python so after looking at all the exhibits gary pulled out my favorite animal of the day which was the anagata rock iguana or the stout iguana this is one of the coolest rock iguanas and also one of the rarest animals in the world you can see he's got these large scales that look like scales but his skin is almost like leather it was so soft it felt velvety now this iguana is so endangered that there's only about 200 of them left in the wild there's only about 12 of them in the united states and here at iguana land Ty had six of them. So to be here, sitting in front of this incredible lizard, petting him, and just being in his presence, well guys, it is the greatest privilege. So again, just wanna give a special thank you to Ty for letting me check out all of his incredible animals. And now we moved him into his indoor exhibit. So you can see there's large rocks, there's water areas, there's basking areas, there's plants. So this indoor exhibit was so cool. So that was the door that we were in, and there's this beautiful viewing glass panel where guests can come and meet him. The next morning. All right, everyone, we made it back from Iguana Land. We have our critically endangered Recordi iguanas in the bag. We're gonna be unboxing them, well, unbagging them in just a little bit. The iguanas that are in this bag right here are some of the most genetically important animals of their species. There's only about two reproductive females in the United States of the Recordi iguanas. So to have a pair of these babies here to hopefully raise them up and reproduce them, Guys, we have an important thing to do for conservation for their species, so I can't wait to reproduce them. But first, we gotta raise them up. We gotta set them up properly. So right here, we're gonna go with the tried and true 20 gallon tank. Now we could get really fancy and we could go a full on vivarium with plants, but these iguanas like it dry and Honestly, for the most part, a lot of times, the more simple, the better. We're gonna have constant heat, constant UV, so we're just going with a basic 20 gallon tank. You can't go wrong with it. We have a mixture of Zoomed forest floor mulch. Now, I'm not sponsored by Zoomed, but Zoomed, if you guys see it, I'd love some of your products. We've got some forest floor, and we have some of the Reptibark. As far as lighting goes, we're gonna be using a combination. So we've got a 100 watt bulb on this side. We've got a 50 watt so we can have some different temperature gradients. We wanna have a hot spot of about 115 degrees and go from about 85 on the cool side all the way to 115 on the hot side. And of course, one of the most important things is our UVB bulb. Since these animals are being raised indoors, you must provide them with a UVB bulb. The UVB mimics the sunlight, so you're gonna to have to give them that UVB since they're not out in the sun. We wanna keep these guys in a controlled environment to raise them up. We also have our branch and our stone. So we're gonna keep this super simple because a lot of times, guys, like I'm telling you, the more simple, the better. So this is gonna be kind of our basking slate stone. 
So we're gonna put that like right here. These stones in the wild, these iguanas live on nice hot rocks that bake in the sun. So this is gonna be like a nice stone for them to bask on. It's gonna get really hot. And then we're gonna take our branch right here, which we kind of cut a little smaller than I'd like it, but we're gonna put our branch right here. So what this is gonna do here is this is gonna allow the iguanas to get a couple different areas of heating. So the iguana will be able to bask on the slate stone and then it will be able to go up a little higher. So it's gonna be warm on the stone, probably a little bit hotter up here, and then they're gonna be able to cool down wherever they want on either side of the enclosure. And I also wanna add these black stones. So these black stones are gonna get even hotter than the wood in this light stone. Anything that's dark color is gonna get extra warm. So these iguanas normally bask on these really dark stones. So I also wanna give them the option to mimic their environment as close as possible. So we've got some stones here. I have them down here. I just wanna get a couple more of these stones in here. Because again, we want to try and mimic their natural environment as much as possible here in captivity. So this is kind of basically what the setup's going to look at like, minus the food and the water. So again, very simple, but also really effective. So we got a thin layer of mulch because these iguanas don't like it too humid. The thicker the layer of the mulch is, the more humidity the enclosure is going to hold. So I don't expect them to eat today, but we have some hibiscus leaves. We have some romaine lettuce and hibiscus flowers. And we have a water dish, which we're going to put in first. This is kind of like a zoom ed day. We got all zoom ed products here today. So we're gonna put the water dish right here in this corner, just like that. And we're going to add our food in right here next to it. It's always good to have your food and water kind of next to each other. So we've got that. Now we gotta actually add water in. Here, we're just gonna pour it on in just like that. Just enough water. And that is it. Our setup is done. It's very simple, but it also looks great. So we've got food, we've got water, we got everything. So we're gonna start with our UVB light, which is not much light, it just lets off a little bit. We've got our first heat lamp and our second heat lamp. And would you look at that? So we've got a perfect heating area. We're also gonna be taking temperatures to make sure we got the hot spots how we want it. So we got our 100 watt bulb in the center. We have our 50 watt off to the side and we got the UVB here. So guys, look at the setup. It's simple, it's effective, and it looks so good. The time has come, the moment you guys have been waiting for. We are getting ready to unbag our Recordi iguanas. The female's moving around, so we might unbag her first, but these are quite literally the most endangered animals that we have here on the property besides the clouded leopard. There's only about two to 3,000 of them left in the wild. There's only two reproductive females, again, here in the United States, so to have these animals is just a huge privilege. So guys, comment down below. Which one should we unbag first? Should we do the male or the female, guys? Let me know down below. And I have decided we are going to do the male first. I wanna get the male, he seems to be calm. Now I handpicked these babies out. We probe sex them to make sure that they were the right sex. So we're gonna unbag them right now. We don't want these iguanas to go flying and go crazy, so we gotta be, we gotta be gentle with this. We have to be intentional, but I'm so excited to show all of you. Now, they might not look like a lot to you guys. They honestly just look like gray little lizards. Wait, oh, oh, I see them. Oh, I got him, I see him. So we're just gonna reach our hand in the bag just like this. Now I'm holding him on the bottom. I don't want him to run out. And now we're gonna take him out right now in three, two, one. Look at this right here. This is a baby Recordi rock iguana. Now they honestly kind of look like the rhinos, but if you know about these rock iguanas, these are the only Cyclura iguanas to have spiny tails like a spiny tail iguana. So this tail is gonna get thick and bulky as this iguana ages and the males get quite large, an absolutely incredible little animal. And these again are found in the same area that you're gonna find the rhino iguanas. So we're gonna add them to the enclosure right now. We're gonna do that. So we wanna get him inside of his enclosure. So we're gonna also be adding lock clips on here, but we're gonna add him in just now, just like this. We're just gonna gently let him down in. Here you go, buddy. Now you wanna be gentle. We don't want him to run off. So we just wanna kinda of place him there. And when he feels the heat on the log, he'll probably just stay there because these iguanas are gonna wanna bask. They're gonna wanna stay warm. And look at that. There he is. We wanna be extremely gentle with this. We don't wanna scare him and get too close. But look at this guy basking up on the log. It's so amazing to have one of the rarest iguanas in the world here at the Redland Conservation Center. I'm hoping to do right by these animals, reproduce them, keep them in a nice exhibit, and get to teach others about them. And a PSA for everyone, we're not leaving this enclosure out here in my living room. It's really open, and these iguanas are gonna to wanna to feel safe. They're not gonna to wanna to feel open and exposed. So we're actually gonna be moving them into my home office. We're gonna be putting black paper on the sides and the back so they can feel nice and secure. So now that we added our first one in, 
It's time to unbag our female. I'm so excited to see her. I haven't seen her since we picked her out a couple hours ago. Now we definitely wanna let these guys acclimate. We don't wanna handle them too much. Let's get her out right now in three, two, one. Look at her, oh, she's a little chunkers. This is our female record eye iguana here and look at her back. You can see those incredible stripes. And you can see she has that same exact spiny-like tail. It's really hard to see this, but even on their legs, right here on the back legs, you can see that they're also spiky, just like the tail. Everything I've been working towards is for moments like these, to have these incredible animals, to preserve them, and teach others about them. Well, guys, that's my greatest mission in this life, is to teach others and share this wildlife with you guys and get you guys passionate about them. And look at this girl. She's just naturally tame. She's coming to check me out. Hi there. Hi. Look, she's friendly. She wanted to come say hi to me. Look at this, hi. Hello. Hi, pretty. Hi. So when you talk to them, they're actually looking at you. I don't know if you can really see how she stares at me, but she's looking at me and she's listening to every single word that I'm saying. We've got our pretty girl right here. Now we're actually gonna put her on in. So we're gonna bring her right over here. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna kind of gently place her in here. She kind of wants to crawl up my arm. She doesn't want to leave me right now, but here, you gotta go here. I know, you wanna stay up on me. So we're just gonna put her down below here. Kinda let her do her thing and find out where she wants to go. Oh, and she, she took off. Our new record eye iguanas are set up and they are ready to go. So we're gonna be moving them into my home office in just a minute and that is going to end today's episode. I hope all of you guys did enjoy watching today's video, touring iguana land and picking up our critically endangered record eye rock iguanas. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below a name for these two iguanas. We don't have a name for them, so we definitely need a name. Comment down below a name for them and if you guys are not yet subscribed yet to me, you wanna see these iguanas grow up and you want to see the rest of my animal family? Well guys, all you have to do is go right now and subscribe below.